Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today we have a lesson on some expressions that have some connection with music. So you could call them metaphors or idioms, and they all have a, a musical connection. Okay, so uh, we have a list here on the board, so let's just go through them. And uh, you may already have heard some of them. Uh, but I'll explain each one. Okay. So, first of all, on the fiddle. So, the fiddle is that's another name for a violin, a stringed instrument um, that you play with a bow. So, what, what could that mean to be on the fiddle? Playing a violin? What does that mean? But in fact, um, it's, it means uh, also to fiddle can mean to, to fiddle about with something, to play around with something. So um, fiddle can mean a violin, but it has other meanings too. Like if she's always fiddling, she's always fiddling with her clothes or with her hair. And so to fiddle can have other meanings. And in this expression, to be on the fiddle, if you say, I think he's on the fiddle, and you say it suspiciously, it means the person is doing something wrong, something illegal, possibly. Maybe if they work for a company, uh, they work in the accounts department, and they're, they're taking money and, and covering it up while they're taking it, you know, so that nobody notices, uh, they're on the fiddle. They're, they're doing something bad. So to be on the fiddle is not a very uh, good thing. So um, you have to be careful if you say you think somebody's on the fiddle. Um, you have to be sure you, uh, you're not just making it up if you have real evidence. Okay. So, okay, that's that one. And the next one, if... People talk about having a harmonious relationship, um, maybe one country with another. Their diplomatic communications are very good. They have a harmonious relationship. Or maybe if they're not very good, uh, you might say we, we don't have a very harmonious relationship with that country. We're always having disputes. Um, to do with fishing rights and things like that, you know. Um, ever since Brexit, there's been a little bit of trouble over fishing in the sea between this country, the UK, and France. Um, so it's not always a harmonious relationship. Harmony in music, meaning sounds that go well together, it's harmonious. It sounds nice. Um, so that's the meaning of that one. So, okay, what about this one? If you're drumming up support, I need to drum up support for my project. Um, or you're promoting a charity and um, you need to drum up support to get people to donate to the charity. Um, so it comes from drums, drumming, you know, the percussion instrument that you, you hit with a stick. Uh, and that kind of drumming in real life, uh, in a literal sense, uh, it's noisy. It makes a lot of noise and it makes people, oh, what's going on here? Drums. It's sort of getting your attention. So if you're drumming up support for something, you're getting people's attention um, to get them to, uh, you know, contribute something, to um, help, to volunteer for a, a project or to donate some money or to donate their time and so on. So that's drumming up support. Um, this one, if you say to somebody, oh, please change the record, and you say it in that sort of tone of voice where you look a bit... Oh, I'm tired of this. Are you going to change the record soon? Um, it's uh, from the days when we had records, you know, uh, sort of 
this black vinyl record, gramophone record, that goes on a turntable and a needle plays, you know, and the sound comes out. So if you play a record on the gramophone, on the record player, uh, you might play one record, but then you take that record off, you put a different one on. You don't play the same one over and over again. Uh, so if somebody's saying the same thing over and over again, they can't get off one subject, uh, maybe for half an hour, an hour, and you get a bit tired of hearing about the same thing, you might say, are you going to change the record soon? Um, I'm a bit tired of hearing about that subject. I think you've exhausted that subject now. Can we change the record? Um, so it comes from putting a different record on the gramophone. Okay. And then this is a bit similar. If somebody sounds like a broken record or they're beginning to sound like a broken record, um, that's what happens when if, if the record, this black vinyl, is broken or there's a crack in it and um, the needle uh, is going round on it, but because of the crack in the record, the needle keeps going back into the same, uh, the groove. So these lines on the record are called grooves. And the, the needle is in a groove. And if there's nothing wrong with the record, the needle will just go and play through the whole record from the outside it starts on the outside and goes into the middle. Um, if the record's broken, there's the possibility that the needle will keep slipping back and it never goes further on in the music. So you start to hear repetition of just one little sound uh, every sort of 10 seconds or so. It just goes back again and repeats the same 10 or 15 seconds uh, over and over again until you might just tap the, the gramophone and it, the needle might jump and then it can start playing properly again. But that's not a very good thing to do because you can damage the needle. So if you're beginning to sound like a broken record, that's what it means. Again, it's a bit like this one. Uh, speaking in a repetitive way, saying the same thing over and over again. Okay, and I will try to stop doing that right now uh, and move on to the next one. So uh, if you say, oh, that rings a bell, that name rings a bell. I've heard that name before. So if the name rings a bell, it means in your head, ah, that's familiar. So if something like a name of a person is familiar, um, oh, that rings a bell. I've heard about that before. So that's what that one is. Uh, going for a song. If something is on sale in a shop um, and it's going for a song, do you think it's expensive or not expensive? If it's going for a song. Going means being sold. So for a song, is a song expensive? If, if you just sing a song, it doesn't cost you anything, does it? So if something is going for a song, it's on sale for a very small amount of money, like a, a penny or something, or 10, ten pennies, um, not very much at all. So going for a song, I think the, the idea is you, you just sing sing a song and they'll give it to you. So that doesn't cost you anything then. Uh, but it does mean a little bit of money. It's not completely free, but uh, it's a very small amount of money. Okay, so next one. Uh, do you blow your own trumpet? Do you have a trumpet? 
that you blow. So that's the literal blowing a trumpet, like Louis Armstrong, the famous jazz man. Uh, but in a metaphorical sense, somebody who blows their own trumpet is someone who is always talking about themselves and the great things that they're doing. Uh, they're sort of big-headed, egotistical. Oh, he's always blowing his own trumpet. He's always saying what brilliant things he's been doing. You know, the opposite of being modest. Okay, so that's that one. Um, someone who likes to call the tune, if... Uh, if you work with somebody in an organization and you say, oh, he likes to call the tune, you know, he always wants to call the tune. Uh, again, it sounds like a criticism, doesn't it, the way I'm saying it. Um, and it does mean somebody who always wants to be in charge. Uh, they want to run everything. They want to be the leader all the time to call the tune to sort of, in the musical sense, to say, what tune, what tune are we going to have next, you know, or calling the tune for people to dance to. It's that idea of being an organiser of, of other people. Okay, right. So what about this one then? If you blow the whistle on somebody or blow the whistle on um, an organization, a company. Uh, does it sound like a good thing or a bad thing, do you think? So a whistle, <laughs> whistling, a little whistle that makes a, a, a sort of loud, high-pitched noise, which I, I can't do, sorry. Um, what would that be? Also, if you think of uh, the whistle that they use in sports, like in football, soccer, uh, you have a referee who's there on the field with the players who, if they see somebody doing something wrong, they blow the whistle and they stop the game. So that suggests something. Somebody did something wrong. I'm blowing the whistle. We stop. We need to sort this out. Uh, so if you blow the whistle on somebody or on an organisation, it means you know that they've done something wrong and often people see that and they, they don't say anything because they know that if they blow the whistle on that person, um, it could be a bad thing for them. It can, you know they could be victimised themselves for telling other people about it. So that's why often people keep quiet because they don't want any trouble themselves. So to be a whistleblower, uh, that's the, the, the noun that comes from it, to blow the whistle on somebody or a company, to be a whistleblower, it's quite a, you know, a risky thing to be because you can um, have trouble coming to you as a result of it. So that's that one. Okay, but this one, this is quite a different use of the word whistle. If something is as clean as a whistle, or a person can be as clean as a whistle, uh, if, um, if they never do anything wrong, you could say, oh, he's clean as a whistle, no criminal record, never does anything wrong, he's always nice to people, um, no deceptions, no telling lies, no, he's clean as a whistle, or um, a piece of machinery, you could say, is, oh, it's clean as a whistle, this uh, machine, there's no dirt or oil in it or anything, clean as a whistle. Uh, why a whistle, I don't know, but perhaps whistles are usually clean uh, compared with other things. I don't really know. So that's that one anyway. Um, oh, if you say to someone, oh, you've changed your tune. And again, it has a certain tone of voice. Oh, you've changed your tune. 
uh, for example, if uh, if you thought, well, I thought you didn't like um, chocolate. I thought you didn't like chocolate, but now you're you're eating a lot of it and you're talking about it and you like it. I thought you didn't like chocolate. You've changed your tune. Or you didn't like a person. You're always criticizing a particular person. And, but then they start to praise that person and say how brilliant they are. Oh, you've changed your tune. I thought you didn't like them. So uh, it's a little bit like changing the record to change your tune. Um, in that sort of context. Right, next one, to face the music. So in this sense, the music, I usually think of music as being something nice, but if you have to face the music, it means you have to face up to some trouble that you may have caused yourself. If you've done something wrong, and then you have to admit it to somebody uh, and say, it's time for me to face the music. I've got to admit to that person I, I made a mistake and that I'm very sorry. Um, and they might shout at me and tell me off and criticise me and be angry with me, but I've just got to stand there or sit there and take it. I've got to face the music. And then maybe you get through that difficult experience and then you might make friends with the person again and then everything improves after that. But first of all, you have to face that person and admit you did something wrong and say you're sorry and take whatever criticism they might shout at you. Uh, but then just stay with it and hope things will get better. So that's facing the music. And then finally, to end with a nice one, if you say, oh, that's music to my ears, um, it doesn't mean literally you're hearing music playing, which you like the sound of. But if somebody says to you, for example, um, in a company, um, we're all going to have a pay rise next month. We're all having a pay rise, 10% pay rise. <gasps> oh, that's music to my ears. That's good news. So it's when you hear some good news, uh, you can say, that's music to my ears. Okay, so I hope that's been a useful uh, lesson on all these different musical expressions, uh, good and bad, and some perhaps neutral. Um, and there will be a quiz on, on this. So if you'd like to go to ingvid.com and do the quiz, see how you do. And so thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.